fight too. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, look, with Cisco not having his powers anymore, he still has his abilities, his tremendous abilities. He's an intellect, he's a genius, you know, a good genius, prodigy, all that stuff. But him not being in the field, you're a, you're a team member down. You know, you're a team member down, and that creates different adjustments and different threats for, for Barry and the rest of Team Flash because you need, you know, uh, you need the members out there to be able to, to combat the threats that are coming. And uh, that is going to change a little bit. He will be out there more. Um, and I think he, he is going to step it up more in his own leadership position. You know, he's at a point now where he's he's ripened enough where he knows how to do this stuff. You know, he doesn't need, I mean, Barry taught him a lot of stuff season four. He had all that work, and then in season five, it's just part of it, you know? What can we expect to see from Ralph's arc this season? More of him. What can we expect to see from Ralph's arc this season? Uh, we're going to see more of a... We're going to continue the progression of, of into the protective aspect that we started last year and ended with you know, him figuring out Thawne and the dagger and all that stuff. And we're going to continue that. And I think he's going to be a little more independent this year in that sense. Kind of, you know, being that private eye and we're going to see, finally see more what does he do when he's doing that private eye stuff and see how good he really is at it. Um, and how that also forces him to go to pursue those things. And obviously the element of, you know, Sue Dibney is going to come in at some point this season. Um, that's going to change him forever. What are the chances of Ralph getting a new costume this year? You know, somebody else just asked me that, and that's something that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, we needed to get the season off the ground. It's tricky because when I look at the Ralph Dibney costume, you know, the orange one, I don't really see the orange one working. That's a little too walking highlighter. Um, I love like the purple kind of mauve sort of thing. And then the other one that I love is the red one. But we've got a guy that kind of has the market corner on the red and it's his show. You know what I mean? I love the red one. It's something that I'd love to explore at some point. But I think it's a little tricky when we've got you know, the Scarlet Speedster and it's, he's the hero, you know? Uh, I'd love to see that suit. I think if anything happens with a different suit, it's going to be after the crisis. I feel like the show does a really good job of balancing the detective aspects with, you know, with the budgetary reasons, like not going too crazy with the superheroic stuff. Yeah. How, um, how hard do you think they're going to have, like, especially with something like Crisis coming, like, to know if they're going to need more um, special effects? Well, I don't know. I, I, I haven't had that conversation with them yet. You know, I, I really honestly don't know if they're going to involve more of the special effects in Crisis. I don't know. You know, more of a logistical problem than a great, you know, than a greater problem for sure. Logistics are tricky when you have, especially in crossovers and stuff like that. You have so many people with so many powers, and you need special effects for every little thing. It just becomes a tremendous amount to do. And when you've got to get these things filmed and get them out within a few weeks, those are tricky timelines to do. You know, it's not like doing a movie where we have a year post production. It's a bit of a challenge. I would love to see more of that. I have a tremendous amount of ideas that I've spoken with Eric Wallace about, that he's been very receptive about, of different ways to to do Ralph's powers, to do elongated man's powers. I mean, I'm big on trying to develop a different kind of fighting style for him this year. I think there's a way for him to be very dangerous with what his powers are that I think would be really, really cool, you know? I'd love to see that. I mean, he's got a built-in wit, he's got a built-in grapple you know, he's got all this stuff that would be really fun. And I'd love to see elements of that part of working on it. Um, and we're also going to see how, you know, in terms of the way that he he fights, how, you know, that he's, he's you know, got the detective aspect uh, and really pumped that up. How does he use that when he's in battle for that? You know, can, he, can he use the detective skills to kind of help him fight enemies? And, kind of you know, and we're exploring all of that. So you mentioned Sue's coming this season. Sure. Oh, boy, are you excited to get the to get the play that kind of ball spec? Is that a different kind of? I'm a nervous to be honest. <laughs> I'm like, I am excited, but I'm also like, I'm nervous because I feel like ever since I started on this show, that all roads have been leading to that. Mm -hmm. And I think we're wrapped up in all roads lead to Sue, right? And I never thought about it until you asked me that question, but I'm like a little nervous about that. That's, you know, I want that to be good and I want that to be really good. And I, I'm excited, but, uh, boy, that's a big thing, you know? Like, 
guess that's like when you do Joker in a Batman movie. It's like this is a big, big thing for this character. So like, you want it to be to be amazing. And I think that's going to come down in a lot of ways to the casting and to who and whoever ends up playing uh, Sue Dibney. I think it's going to be a very interesting thing to see play out. 